This is WBEZ. I'm producer Joe DeSone. I'm here with David Saffron. He stuck around after uh, the show to play another song with his band and also tell me a little bit more of his backstory. David, thanks for coming in. This is great. So your debut album coming out this summer. Hopefully, yeah. Delicate Parts. Um, you say hopefully. It's been a process. It's, it's, been, been, a lo- it's been a long time in the making. Yeah. I, I would I would say it's taken <laughs> about... 3,000 years. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've read interviews dating back to as far as 2009, where you're talking about an album that is tentatively named uh, Delicate Parts. Four years later, yeah. is, I mean, it, that was... is it really happening? Is it really? Well, honest? the album has been done. It's been finished for nine months nine now. Months. So three, four years ago, you have what you think is an album's worth of material, what may or may not become. I started releasing singles, actually, around 2008, 2009. So I released yeah. a single called Nothing Got Me Kisses. Then I did Adult Things in 2009. And then we did a song called Strange Acts and Woman Stride. And Woman Stride came out about a year ago, and that was, the responses were just phenomenal. And once again, I think a lot, a lot of that had to do with Genevieve from a band called Company of Thieves and her remarkable fan base that really took kindly to the song and helped promote it and it got a lot of national attention, you know, mainly through the blogosphere, which was new for me too because yeah. that was, the, that was the, the opposite audience for me. release an album, you know, a few years ago, when you saw it sort of in the near distance? I don't know. For a long time, I was uh, suspicious of my writing process and the, the songs and whether they had any value, whether they'd be received well. I mean, there wasn't, uh, there was sort of a ferocious ambiguity to my songs for a long time. And uh, When you say you're suspicious of your writing process, what do you mean by that? I just really, I wanted it all to sound right. And I think the... Um, Do you think if you'd released something two, three years ago, well, the problem you, is might, not was, be, you was, might not be happy with it right now? Yeah, I mean, but I, I'm not happy with something that's released like six minutes ago. You know, I self-financed the album. It was like financing my own excavation. So a lot of it had to do with what, what's cheapest. <laughs> you know, really, I mean, like, I, and what would people listen to? You know, do I want to remain in this adult contemporary world for the rest of my life, or do I want to change it? Do I want to appropriate other genres? Is that is that weird? I'm a singer-songwriter, so... And I, I kind of have always felt that I lack a lot of musical skill. So a lot of the music and the material. Why do you say that? What do you mean you lack? Me? I mean, you are obviously a singer. You have a I, But I never voice. thought of myself as a singer, ever. You know, and I never Until thought... Until this Adidas ad, huh? Until this Adidas ad. And, and even tell, that, tell I Tell me a little bit about them coming to you for your voice when you're a person who didn't yeah. identify as a, no, as a singer. No small irony in that, in that project. Tell me about that. Well, they wanted something specific. They wanted, you know, this uh, Jarvis Cocker attitude and style... Uh, with an American accent and a deeper voice, so they were very specific. And it wasn't just the ad agency, it was also Adidas. Mm -hmm. Uh, And it was everyone that was part of this campaign, and it was a major campaign. So to select me... As the voice, yeah. I I thought it was a mistake. I I thought it was crazy. Did that give you confidence? I don't know if it gave me confidence. It, in your voice, I mean. Not really, no. Yeah. I'm still very shaky and uncertain. But I think it just, the whole thing was, was amusing. Mm-hmm. And it was, the whole thing was kind of slick, too. So I just enjoyed sitting back and watching this machine work, <laughs> you know? <laughs> Uh, 
All right, so the song you're going to play for us, mm-hmm. you and your band are going to play for us, The Ugliness of Others, this is a band that you, for the most part, with the exception of maybe one person, you've only recently assembled. Yeah. How do you take these songs that you've worked and polished and finessed over not days or weeks or months, but years, and hand them over for a collaborative process with these people who are all new to it? Like, what's, what's that like? What's that feel like? It's very tense. Yeah. Very, very tense. I like working with the same musicians over and over, so and having like a, a band leader. So for this particular show, a lot of new people came on, and we were, I think it's just knowing what you don't want to hear and then hoping they'll agree with it. <laughs> uh, and it's hard for me to determine what it's going to sound like, but it really is just kind of throwing yourself at the mercy of other, other human beings and hoping they get it. Well, it sounded great so far. Looking forward to uh, to this. Thanks, this is Joe. The, the Ugliness of Others. It's from the forthcoming release, Delicate Parts. David Saffron, thank, thank you so much. Thanks, man. Yeah. 